The Obamas are back in the news, but this time it's not about Tafari Campbell, their personal chef's death and the details concerning that, which we'll probably never hear about. This time it's about their company Higher Ground Productions and Obama's hand that was directly played in the new Netflix sensation Leave the World Behind, a thriller adaptation of Ruman Alam's 2020 novel about a massive cyber attack that hits the US wiping out all data, internet, cell phones, you name it, gone. Where have we heard about a massive cyber attack before? Oh yeah, Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum. Remember when I shared this video with you? Pay insufficient attention to the frightening scenario of a comprehensive cyber attack, which would bring to a complete halt to the power supply, transportation, hospital services, our society as a whole. The COVID-19 crisis would be seen in this respect as a small disturbance in comparison to a major cyber attack. Now, according to Sam Esmail, the director of the movie, he spoke to The Independent and said that Obama, quote, had a lot of notes that were included in on the script for the movie. Why would he do that? I believe these elites have this sick and twisted mentality of performing something called predictive program. What exactly is predictive program? This isn't some new definition or some made up term. This has actually been going on for ages through the CIA, FBI and other operative organizations within the federal government. It's where fictional movies, books, music or other assets are utilized as a means to tell us what these elites plan to do before they actually do it. It's essentially subtle psychological conditioning or ideological subversion to acquaint the public with massive or major societal changes that they plan to implement. They like to tell us what they're planning to do as it gives them some weird satisfaction. But the fact is, is that when we say or do nothing, we give them consent to do it. Now, in my opinion, the movie was absolutely trash. It sucked, but I'm not going to go into that and, and ruin it for you. You have to watch it for yourself and draw your own conclusion. But one particular point in the movie stood out to me. One of the characters, G.H., sitting in a car with another of the fictional characters when he had this realization of what was actually taking place in the world. And he described this, and I'll give you this quote. He says, this was a three-stage maneuver which, if used or utilized effectively, could topple a country's government from within itself. The first stage is isolation, which was the power outage and hacking of the satellites which stop even satellite phones from working. Once that's done, the second stage is synchronized chaos, where the country is terrorized with covert attacks and misinformation, such as the piercing noise and the varied leaflets and so on. If done successfully, the third stage would happen on its own. Coup d'etat, civil war, collapse. This program, program, was considered the most cost-effective way to destabilize a country, GH explains, because if the target nation was dysfunctional enough, it would, in essence, do the work for you. Whoever started this wants to finish it. We've heard about the globalist plan for depopulation. The earth should be brought down to a certain amount of people. A certain number of people should be wiped off. And I've shared videos like this with you before, but just for context, watch this little clip. Here we can see a chart that looks at the total world population over the last several hundred years. And at first glance, this is a bit scary. We go from less than a billion in 1800, and then three, four, five, six, and 7.4 billion where we are today. Well, over this decade, uh, we believe unbelievable progress can be made, both inventing new vaccines and making sure they get out to all the children who need them. The benefits there in terms of reducing sickness, reducing the population growth, it really allows the society a chance to take care of itself uh, once you've made that intervention. The negative impact of population growth on all of our planetary ecosystems is becoming appallingly evident. The United Nations can and should play an essential role in helping the world find a satisfactory way of stabilizing world population. We've got to stabilize the population. When I was born, no, there were so too, what's wrong with the population? I mean, with too many people. That's what. That's why we have global warming. We have global warming because too many people are using too much stuff. But if there were less people, they'd be using you know, less stuff. It, you know. The world today has 6.8 billion people. That's headed up to about 9 billion. Now, if we do a really great job on new vaccines, health care, 
reproductive health services, we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15 percent. We could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15 percent. Predictive programming or just an interesting movie? You decide. Drop your comment down below and let me know what you think about this.